Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very proud to announce today the commencement of the Queensland Police Service Online Crime Statistics Portal, uh, which has gone live today. Uh, the intent is to provide the community which mu with much more up-to-date information about where crime is being committed and being sold uh, in their community. Certainly, uh, the initiative is in line with the government's open data um, initiatives and direction. And uh, we're very proud to be part of that um, government direction by providing uh, greater access to the public uh, for crime that's occurring anywhere in Queensland. So explain how it works. How do I go on there and work it? Well, any member of the public can um, access the portal by simply going to our, our Queensland Police webpage. And on that webpage, uh, they simply click on the online statistics area and that will bring up the map of Queensland which, and uh, a range of filters. So they can decide uh, which crimes they'd like to search for um, and the area that they'd like to search in. So what crimes can we search for? In fact, uh, nearly every crime class is provided uh, in a mappable uh, environment. So every crime class will come up on our maps other than um, two, and that's domestic violence and sexual crime. Um, while that information is provided in an aggregated way on a monthly basis for privacy reasons, we haven't added it to the map. But every other crime class is there. There's, there is a lag of about a week between when a crime uh, event occurs and when it will go live on our, uh, on our crime map. Um, and there are reasons for that in terms of quality control of the information. Uh, but certainly, uh, with that weak lag, people can look at their area, at, at a neighbouring area, at a whole city, at the whole state, in fact, to look at what crime is being committed. Sexual offences? I mean, what would that entail? Why have you included that? Um, there are issues around uh, privacy, uh, individual privacy, particularly victims. And uh, so we've chosen to keep that uh, in our normal monthly uh, aggregated stats, which uh, will provide numbers in a divisional area, but not uh, in this specific area where it occurs. What, what level of detail can you get? Is it, do, do you know at number 45 there was a break in, number 78 there was a car stolen, or is it not to that? The, the map will provide a general location, but again, uh, for specific data to an address, that won't be given. But it certainly will give in information about the crime and it will be in the general area of where the crime is, it occurs. And how are you updated being solved? How do we know it's going to be solved? Um, that information is within the icon and uh, so the crime will come up as a, a particular uh, type and uh, it will give a time and what have you when the crime occurs uh, and it will give another piece of information if it's actually been solved. Do you think it could be embarrassing if crimes aren't solved? And how many crimes there are in particular? No, areas? look, um, this is just a basically a live statistics that we produce uh, to the community on a yearly basis, but it, it is down to another level where we provide this information based on location, very specific location, uh, something more than we've done in the past. Are we going to be able to use these figures to compare you know, one suburb to another suburb? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Certainly uh, the crime mapping uh, will go back about 13 years. So not only can you uh, make judgments about uh, what's happened over time, but you can also uh, compare suburb to suburb, uh, area to postcode to postcode even. Is there been um, any consultation with, say, real estate groups or anything like that about whether they have any issues with, with this? Certainly we understand that there is always a balance in providing this type of information, but in line with the government's intent to provide the community with information so that they can make informed choices on a range of issues, we see the crime mapping as being part of that initiative. Where are the worst spots? Um, look, I'll leave that up to, uh, up to all of the community to have a look at, but the reality is there'll be no surprises, I don't think, uh, in relation to the type of information they can glean from this. As I said, this information is provided uh, down to divisional level normally, and we've been doing that for many, many years on a, uh, on a yearly basis in our annual statistical review process. Uh, but what this will give people is up-to-date information. There are other benefits uh, to the community of this information being there, and that is that if someone was checking in their area and saw a particular uh, crime come up on the, on the map, uh, they may remember seeing something, they rem may remember some incident that occurred uh, and provide that information to the police to help us solve that particular crime. So there are certainly benefits uh, from this. 
do you, do you see uh, the police building on this in the future? And so if you have a certain area, it might flash up, these are the unsolved crimes, kind of things that we need a hand on? Or? Uh, I, look, who knows where technology is going to take us, um, uh, the way that technology is evolving so quickly. But in the future, it may be, uh, we may show hotspots, be able to show um, current time hotspots with crime uh, to help the, the community understand what's occurring in real time in their area. But that's for the future. But should individual um, residents have any concerns about, you know, if they're concerned about their privacy, about you know, what's happened at their home, you know, for their neighbours being able to see what's on these maps? The individual map uh, information will not be down to the detail of exactly where the crime occurred, but it will be close by. So certainly uh, that information, I mean, by doing uh, the mapping exercise, we have to be able to put it somewhere. Um, it's no good having them all um, at the intersection of a road, say, you know, 100, 200 metres away. The whole purpose of the crime map is to provide better information to the community so that the community can ultimately help us as well. So it is a, a, a double benefit, essentially, keeping the locals more informed so that therefore they may, may be able to help. Absolutely. I mean, this is not just about people making informed decisions about what's occurring in their neighbourhood. It certainly is about helping them to understand what's going on and potentially being able for them to recognise that something's occurred and provide information back to the police. And Crime Stoppers obviously is a way of doing that. Do other states have this type of uh, Look, this is a worldwide trend and not only other states have it uh, in Australia, but uh, around the world there are examples of this. The, I would suggest though that um, the, the, the ability for us to put up stats that are only a week old is probably best practice um, in Australia at the moment for crime stats. So why has it taken so long to launch something like this? Oh look, um, technology is a wonderful thing. Um, there's a lot of planning and effort goes into providing this type of service, but, but in line with government policy, uh, certainly this is something that we've been working on for a while. Are we one of the last states to take this on board? No, not at all. Um, there are some states that have it, some areas that have it. Um, I th I think that the ACT was the last one to go live uh, about a year ago and uh, here we are today. How, how effective, what, do you talk to the other states about how effective it has been? Oh, certainly, um, as I said, this is, not, this is not just about law enforcement, this is about providing data to the, to the community so that they can make informed decisions on a range of, uh, a range of decisions that they, they want to make about where, where do they want to live, those sorts of issues. I'm sure that people will look at this when they're making uh, decisions, lifestyle choices. Now that you've set it up, is it going, will it take much resources to keep the update or is it all automated? It's, not? it's basically automated, but obviously there's a quality control mechanism that um, takes some manual work as well, but uh, basically it's automated. So do you expect, you know, residents might, from all over the state might start grouping together and saying, well look, we've had X number of break-ins in our suburbs and our streets, what are, you, what are you doing about it? Look, I hope they do. In fact, uh, that's one of the benefits of of the community being able to make informed decision and the, some of the informed decisions about the quality of the policing services we provide um, and I hope that that will exactly uh, be part of the discussion that will happen at the local level.